Today on The Hookup, we're going to take a look at the Shelly 2, a Wi-Fi smart relay module that installs behind your existing switch that can control two circuits and monitor power consumption either locally via MQTT or HTTP or by using the Shelly Cloud. All for under $20. A few weeks ago, I reviewed the Shelly One Relay Module, and I determined that it was overall a pretty great value. The Shelly One was especially great for DIY smart home hobbyists like me because of how easy it is to change the firmware. But the Shelly Two doesn't have the same exposed programming headers as the Shelly One, so it's quite a bit more difficult to install custom firmware. In this video, I'm going to show you how I easily flash Tasmoda on my Shelly Two without the need for a soldering iron. But first, I'm going to show you why you might not even want to mess with the firmware now that Shelly has released an update for their factory firmware that allows for local MQTT control and monitoring of their entire Shelly Relay lineup, including the Shelly 1, Shelly 2, and the Shelly 4 Pro. This video is going to focus specifically on the Shelly 2, but the instructions can be applied to any of these devices. Before we start, here's a quick review of the Shelly 2 hardware. Inside the case, there are two 10 amp relays that can be controlled remotely or triggered via the switch inputs on the Shelly 2. To install the Shelly 2, you'll need to provide an unswitched hot wire and a neutral wire. This is not a neutral free installation, unfortunately. Each circuit has an output that sends main voltage on from the input. So that means unlike the Shelly 1, these relays are not isolated from the mains voltage and can therefore not be used to switch low voltage. The Shelly 2 also includes a single power monitoring chip, which means that it measures the combined power consumption of both circuits. To access the latest firmware, including MQTT support, you can access your Shelly device by navigating to its IP address to access the web console. Click on the Update Firmware button, and it will download and install on its own. After your Shelly device reboots, it will now have a tab under Internet and Security called Advanced Developer Settings. And in there, you'll find the option Enable Action Execution via MQTT. Once you've checked that box, you can now enter your username, password, MQTT server, and port. I'd also recommend ticking the boxes for Retain and Clean Session, and then hit Save. At this point, the Shelly 2 will start to send out information about power consumption on its specific MQTT topic. The topics are Shelly's front slash Shelly switch dash, and then a unique identifier for the switch that turns out to be the last six digits of the MAC address. Then front slash, relay, front slash, and then either power or energy depending on which value you're interested in. The easiest way to make sure that you have the correct topic is to use an MQTT client like Node-RED or MQTT Lens, or even the new MQTT client Hassio add-on to subscribe to the wildcard topic, Shelly's front slash, pound sign, or hashtag, or crosshatch, or whatever you happen to call it in your neck of the woods. This will subscribe to every channel that starts with Shelly's. So if you have a lot of Shelly's in your house, this may result in a lot of messages received. Next, you'll need to set up a few entities in Home Assistant, or your home automation platform of choice. These are the entries that I use in Home Assistant to control my switch, and I have two sensors set up, one for power and one for energy. The power is measured in watts, and the energy is measured in kilowatt hours. Unfortunately, the kilowatt hours measurement is lost if your Shelly loses power, and the wattage appears to be off by exactly 17% for me in the US, which is most likely due to a difference in the calculation between 50 Hz and 60 Hz power. Both of these are strictly software issues, and I'm told that they will be addressed shortly via another over-the-air firmware update. For 99% of the people out there, I would recommend using this factory firmware for your Shelly. Now that it has local MQTT control and doesn't rely on the cloud services, it's a pretty great solution. If you require more advanced features, or you're a total nut about network security like I am, then you may still want to be able to install custom firmware on your Shelly 2 devices like Tasmoda. As of a few weeks ago, the developer branch of Tasmoda now supports both the Shelly 1 and Shelly 2 module types and has working power monitoring for the Shelly 2. Before I show you how easy it is to flash the Shelly 2, please note that once you overwrite the Shelly firmware, 
there isn't an easy way to reflash the original firmware. There is a method to copy the original firmware that people have had success with when it comes to the Sonoff firmware, but I've never used it myself and I've certainly never tried it on a Shelly. I put the link to the instructions in the description. If you end up trying it, please let us know how it worked down in the comments. On to the flashing. The Shelly 2 doesn't have standard spacing for each GPIO test hole, so you can't solder in a header like you would on the Sonoff Basic. But the holes happen to be the exact right size for a standard jumper wire to be pressed into them. The pinout for the connections looks like this. Remember that you'll also need to connect your GPIO 0 to ground during the boot process in order to get the ESP8266 into flash mode. And then after flashing Tasmoda, you'll need to disconnect GPIO 0 to get it to boot into the Tasmoda firmware. At this point, you can set up the Shelly just like you would any other Tasmoda device. I'd recommend using backlog commands to get your Tasmoda devices set up easily if you plan on having more than a couple of them. After flashing, you'll set up your MQTT switches in Home Assistant using the same settings you would normally with Tasmoda. These are my favorite settings, but yours might be slightly different. To hear why I chose these settings, you can check out this video. You'll also need to set up a template sensor to pull the power information out of the tele messages sent by Tasmoda. These are the specific settings that I use for that. As always, all the YAML that I mentioned in each video is down in the description. For me, my power settings were automatically detected and were spot on, but there is a method for calibrating your power monitoring if it's not correct. The link for that information is also down in the description. Overall, Tasmoda is more accurate and more powerful than the Shelly firmware, but obviously it requires a lot more initial setup and you've got to open the case, which it's not really made for. Either option is going to work really well. As a bit of a bonus, some folks have been asking me about how the Shelly works with a three-way switch configuration. And the answer to that is, as always, that it really depends on your specific wiring setup, because every country seems to do things a little bit differently. But in certain cases, the Shelly 1 and Shelly 2 are the perfect drop-in solution for a three-way switch setup. The switch terminals use a hot wire coming from your wall switch to trigger the manual toggling of the circuit. And because these terminals are expecting mains voltage, it makes them really easy to add into a pre-existing three-way switch circuit. A very common way for these circuits to be installed in the US is using two traveler wires that carry mains voltage to a second switch. And then that switch outputs the voltage from one of those traveler wires to the circuit drain, which is usually a light. In order to use the Shelly 2 in this configuration, you'll install the module in the electrical box that connects directly to the light. Because of this, you'll also need to have an unswitched hot wire in this box. It's usually for a different light. And I'm not sure if it's due to some electrical code, but all of my three-way switches happen to have a hot wire located in that second electrical box. All you need to do to add the Shelly to the circuit is cut the output of the three-way switch and connect the switch side to either the S1 or S2 terminal, and then the light side to the O1 or O2 terminal. Configure a switch as an edge switch and you're all done. There are of course many other ways that three-way switches are configured and a Shelly device can probably integrate into many of them. This is just the most common way that they're wired in the United States. I'm told that the Shelly 1 and Shelly 2 have fresh shipments at Amazon US and are also available and in stock via their website. They are currently in the process of getting UL certified and I will be sure to report to you exactly when that happens. Just to put it out there one more time, I don't work for Shelly and I'm not paid to make these reviews. I just think that they're really good products that fill a need in the smart home community. On that note, I'd like to thank all of you who do support my channel through either Patreon or through my Amazon affiliate links. I spend a not insignificant amount of time making videos each week. And while I certainly enjoy doing it and sharing my enthusiasm for this hobby with you, your support makes it much easier to justify all of my purchases and time spent to my wife. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.